God does all things well. That's awesome testimony that we'll hear and understand as we talk about today's message. And I just want to thank you all for tuning in. Uh, go ahead and put in the chat box where you're from. We thank you for your being here this morning, uh, whether you're locally, um, around the country, or around the globe. We're just grateful for your joining us today. Now, as we continue our series of Forward Focus Couples, uh, I want to just uh, talk a little bit about last week. You know, we talked about uh, on last week that three is uh, company, right? I believe that was the title. And our bottom line is that there is only a crowd, three is only a crowd, when Christ is not in the middle. Now, why was that so important? Because on last week I shared with you that in 1950, 78% of couples, uh, people were couples and they were committed to their relationships. But by 2020, by the start of 2020, before the pandemic, uh, that had fallen uh, less than 50%. And now that we're in the pandemic and it's almost been a year, uh, we found out that uh, the rate of divorce is escalating. In fact, I think I told you it was either 31 or 34% of people had filed uh, electronically for electronic divorce documents because they couldn't get to the attorney's office. They were coming in electronically. And all of this was happening because the pandemic forced us uh, to deal with some issues in our relationship and it exposed some things. Uh, if you already, it, it created a new conflict and then it exasperated old ones. Uh, for instance, if you had bad habits and poor communication, they were intensified. And I said, if you had romance problems, they were amplified. And if you had finance problems, uh, they were magnified. And so as we continue to look at uh, this uh, forward focused couples this week, I want us to focus on how to become a power couple. Now, whether you are uh, a, a successful couple or a struggling couple or whether you're single wanting to become a couple or if you're single not want to become a couple but want to know how couples ought to act, uh, this, this message is for you. It's something here for everybody. So don't tune me out uh, before you hear me out. Now, uh, to, to really dig down deep on this uh, power couple thing, I think we need to look at some definitions. And you know, when you go out there, you can Google a definition for power couples, uh, but I want us to take a look. I think I, I, I've done some, some research here. And I want us to take a look at some definitions. I think I got about three or four. It says a power couple, here's, here's a definition. A power couple is the coming together of two powerful people who care about succeeding in their respective careers. They come together in a relationship, now check this out, and manage to empower one another instead of dragging one another down. That was one definition. Here's another definition. A power couple is a couple that encourages goodness in the world and make it a better place by being together. Just their mere uh, fact because they're together makes the world a better place. Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, so here's another one. A power couple is two people who are equally cool as each other. Yeah, yeah, their coolness. But they're also individually awesome to be around as they are when they're together. Now, now, if you notice here, most of about being a power couple is based on public perception. So, so, so let me just give you a rundown. Uh, if you were to Google, you know, the top 10 power couples in America, if you were to Google that, uh, here, here's uh, one website that I call, saw, and these are, I call them the so-called power couples. The, the so-called is my definition. They say that these are power couples. All right, but here's your first one. This one probably won't shock you. Barack and o o uh, Michelle Obama. That, that was your number one power couple. Now, your number two power couple was Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds. They starred in Green Lantern, if y'all don't know who they are. You can just check them out. And then uh, the third one was Meghan Markle and Prince Harry. Uh, something's going on with them. They're leaving the, they're leaving the kingdom, right? Yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, they abandoned the kingdom. Now, the next one was Beyonce and Jay-Z. All right, that was number four. And, and the fifth one is uh, 
uh, Alex Rodriguez and Jennifer Lopez. Now, uh, uh, Alex was a big baseball fan, a big baseball star. He was a triple threat. That boy is bad. He's bad. He's on a, a shark tank now, I think, every now and then. He, yeah, he's holding it down. Then there's John Legend and Christy Teigen. Now, I think he was voted America's or the top best looking man or something of that uh, in 2020 or 2019, something like that. And then there's Emily Blunt and John Krasinski. Uh, I think she was Invisible Woman, and he was Mr. Fantastic. Uh, Y'all had to check that stuff out. And then there's George and Alma Clooney. Clowney? Is it Clooney or Clowney? Clooney, Clooney. Okay, that's Clooney, yeah. And, and, now, uh, and the ninth one was, now, are they still together, Will and Jada Pickett? I mean, they do some crazy stuff. In, well, <laughs> I, 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 I won't even go there with them. But they're number nine. And, and David and Victoria Beckham. You know who I was surprised that wasn't on here? Your boy, uh, uh, he's married to the Kardashian. Yeah, Kanye. I was surprised he wasn't on here. But anyway, uh, forgive me, y'all. Forgive me. See, but, 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 but those are definitions and those are pictures of people who are looked upon to be a power couple. Now, the problem with this is that many of you are striving to be that kind of public perception, to have that kind of relationship, and it's wreaking havoc on your lifestyle. Am I telling the truth? All right, so, so, so tap the glass, tap the glass. So I'm going to help you out because a lot of us, let me just back up and talk about many of us, some of you. If for those of you who are single who want to be a power couple, and that's why some of you are not to, with anybody yet, because you got this power couple list. You got this list of things that they must bring to the table in order for you to bring yourself to the table. And if they don't measure up to what's on your list, they don't qualify. That's right, measure up. All right, so, 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 so today I want to help you learn how to become a power couple. Now, I've got to do this in two parts. And so, brothers, uh, uh, I want you to chill. You need to listen carefully because I'm going to talk about the, the first half of the power couple, the, the wife. And then next week, I'm going to talk about the second half of the power couple, uh, the man. All right. So, so, so let's, ju let's just look at this now. I need you to pull out your trusted device if you have them. Uh, and uh, for those of you who don't have our app, I want to go ahead on and encourage you to go out to your app store and, and pull it down uh, and look, just put an FNBC app, I believe, and it will come up, look for our logo. And the reason I want you to do that is because it helps you to keep up with what we're doing on campus, what we're doing in the community, uh, what we're doing in the country and around the globe. In fact, we have things out like there, like uh, where you can get uh, vaccinated, uh, where you can uh, get tested. Uh, I think right now out there we're talking about uh, baptism. So if you want to be baptized, you want to learn about that, we've got a class on next week. It's a virtual class and anybody can sign up for it just to find out if you need to be baptized. Because many of us, if you got baptized when you were younger, you just got wet. And, and so we want you to know really what it means to be baptized. And then growth groups, they're going great and fantastic, uh, but there's still some room. Uh, so you can go out there and sign up for a class. We've got a couples class. We've got a men's class. We've got a noonday class. You can grow anytime, anywhere, for, and everywhere. And we want you to learn what is right, what is not right, how to get right, and how to stay right. And, and so just go ahead on out there and do that. Now, open, now, if you pull down our app, I want you to go to the bottom and you'll see across the bottom of the app, you can do several things down there at the bottom. You can give. Uh, if you want to get connected with us, you can do that. But I want you to go to worship. And when you hit worship, I want you to hit sermon notes. And when you hit sermon notes, I want you to hit today's date. And that's going to put you right where you need to be to worship with us today. And the lesson text that I want to come from today is the book of Ephesians. Uh, and this is where we're going to spend this week and next week. And today we're going to look at verses, uh, chapter 5, verses 22 through 24. Not 25, we're only going to go through verses 22 through 24, all right? And, and so here, here, here's the lesson text, and I'll come from the NIV. Listen to this carefully now. Wives, 
submit yourselves to your own husbands as you do to the Lord. Look at verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, his body of which he is the Savior. Verse 24 now. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to the her husband or their husbands in everything. Now, one of the things you have to understand about this lesson text is you have to understand who the writer was writing to and why. Now, Paul was writing to the church of Ephesus. Now, in that church at Ephesus, it was a very diverse church, both economically, socially, uh, ethnically. Uh, there were Jews, there were Gentiles, and being a power couple isn't something new. Uh, I, I, you know, we sort of think that this is a new kind of uh, uh, phenomena, but it is not. Uh, even in the Greco-Roman days, uh, they wanted to be power couples. Now, let me tell you how a power couple rolled uh, in, in the Greco-Roman days. Uh, for a Jew, uh, for a, a Jewish couple, here's, here's what a power couple looked like. The man, all right, uh, the, the wife to the man wasn't a person, she was property. Yes, yeah, so if, if it was if for a power couple, you, you, he just owned you. Uh, he could do whatever he wanted to. Now, this is a Jewish couple. He could do whatever he wanted to with you. He could, he, he, he could, he could divorce you. And guess what? Divorce in the Jewish uh, culture was simple. Uh, he could divorce you if you didn't fix his breakfast right. You burnt my toast this morning. I'm done with you. Now, 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 it wasn't none of this one year waiting process or, uh, you know, uh, going to a judge. No, all he had to do was write a note, take it over there to the priest. Priest read it, sister gone. That was how it was for the Jews. Now, remember, they had Jews and Gentiles in this church. And so you can see this lifestyle still going on in the church. Paul ain't talking to folks out there in the world. He's talking about for us up here in the church. All right. So next now you had your Jews or no, you had your Jews. Then you had your Greeks or, or what we would call Gentiles, non-Jewish people. Now, for a power couple in that relationship, brothers, now many of us, we probably would. Uh, well, before Christ in my life, I, I, this is how many of y'all might have rolled. All right. Uh, your wife uh, was not your companion. She was for bearing your children, legitimate children, all right, and for taking care of your house. And you could find your pleasure and your comfort elsewhere. That was a power couple for the Greco-Roman world. And there was no uh, uh, divorce laws. If he just says, I want to divorce you, that was pretty much it. He could do it on a whim. The only benefit for the Greco-Roman world was that he would have to pay back the dowry. Cost the little brother some change. You know, I guess that was sort of like child support now or, or alimony or, uh, or back taxes or, or something of that nature. So he had to pay it back. So he had to pay it back. So now when Paul comes along and write this and the reason it's so important to understand this, because this is one of these passages in Scripture. Most pastors run from and most folks don't like to deal with uh, because it sounds like it's, it's, it's going to make things worse. All right. But really, Paul was trying to give God's ideal practices in an immoral world to make life better, not bitter. All right. So this this right here, uh, if you want to be a true power couple, I hope you're listening to me now. Ladies, uh, and for those of you who are looking and for those of you who are in a marriage, here's the first thing the text says. And this is this is where it gets real uh, sticky right out the gate. I'm coming out the gate. Wise. Submit to your, yourselves to your own husbands. Notice that key. There's some key words there. Submit yourselves to your own husbands. Let's just stop right there. Just stop right there. Now, the key thing about this passage uh, for my biblical scholars, if you go back and look at this text in the Greek, the word submit is not even in the text. All right. 
Now, you say, well, how does it get there? There's a, there's a uh, Greek uh, practice that if the verb is missing in the sentence, you go to the prior sentence and pick up that verb and you put it in this sentence. All right. So you remember last week we studied what submit to one another. Right. Out of reverence for the Lord. So what's the verb there was well, submit. And so you pick that up and you put it here. And how was that submission last week? It's the same as it is this week. Submit yourselves. So again, now we're talking about a voluntary a role here. And, and so we're talking about something that the spouse w is being asked to do in a culture that was already she was being forced to do. Are, are y'all walking with me here? He, are y'all walking? Yeah, the, sisters, I hope you get this here. So see, Paul is trying to make life better, not bitter. But a lot of times you take a modern day, a 21st century woman, and she hears this word here, submit. You might as well have slapped her, cursed her, talked about her. Who, I, I, I'm just as much uh, uh, responsible for this household as he is. Now, especially if she's to bring it in the, in the ends. Hello. Huh? I've been daggone. Can I say that? All right. Beep it out if I can't. I've been daggone if I'm going to submit to him. Now, remember the word submit means to arrange under. All right. And the text says here, submit yourselves. So Paul now is not talking to people out there in the world. He's talking to those of us who are believers. Remember, this is why I said on last week, you can't, you can't divorce this text with, from verse 21. It's submit, that we're submit to one another. Remember, we talked about one another's were those who are in the household of faith. And so because of this now, Paul starts to give some ways that that submission ought to work. He's first going to take verses 22 through 24 and talk about how wives are supposed to submit. And then he's going to take verses next week. We're going to look, I think it's 24. 5 through 31 or 32, I believe, on how husbands are supposed to act. And then he's going to go from there on how parents and children are supposed to act. And then he's going to go from there how slaves and masters are supposed to act. And that's another one of those hot topics that I don't have time to talk about. But let me just give you the buzz here. Paul was not promoting slavery as though it was used in the American context. He was, tr he was doing it to show how people who of faith, if they understood how we're supposed to treat one one another regardless of our economic employment situation that's now that, that's a sidebar all right that's a sidebar so let me go back here so now now notice it says submit yourself see he's telling the wife uh, to do this on her own uh, he's, he's saying that don't make this a contentious point don't make this a battle in the house don't draw a line in the sand and talk about what you're not gonna do notice now he says, as, underline, that's the biggest word. We're gonna, it's, it's all through this. As, that's a, what's that called, a simile? I think that's that part of speech, right? All right, so he's saying as, just like, a similar to, as you do, uh-oh, to the Lord. <laughs> all right, let's just, just, just breathe now. Breathe, ladies, breathe. There's something very powerful stated right there. He's now talking about your relationship with God. Are you submitting? Watch this. He says, submit yourselves. If you take out to your, to your own husband's ass, he can say, submit yourselves as you do to the Lord. You see that? So, so now the submission doesn't start with your husband. It starts back in verse 21, out of reverence for Christ as you do to the Lord. He's saying here now that your submission is not because of the knucklehead, I mean the man that you, you, you might be married to. Your submission is out of your relationship with God. Now I'm going to talk more about that later, so just, just hold that right there. OK, uh, but if you've got a relationship with the Lord, there's some things you ought to be doing. You need one. You need to be studying his word to find out what he's asking you to do. All right. And, and then that becomes an act of worship. So let me just give you your first focal point here is something you don't not want you to miss here. Wives, your submission to your to your husband is an act of worship, not an act of war. 
Because as I said earlier, this can become a very contentious point in a household. Very contentious, very contentious. And so I just want you to just put that right there that you're submitting, all right, to your husband, to your own husbands. I wonder why you put that. I guess because some women might have been submitted to some other folks' husbands. All right. So he said, make certain you you're doing this at home. All right. Read the text. I'm just reading. This is 21st century in the first century. See, so whether it's first century or 21st century, nothing's changed. Same Same crowd creeping at night, creeping at night. All right. Are y'all walking with me here? All right. So 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 let's look at that next verse. Is that verse 23 for the husband? is the head of the wife. Ah, right, let's just stop right there. That's another one of those contentious verses. He ain't over me. I don't know who he think he is being over me. I, I ain't going to submit, and he ain't going to be over me. He ain't going to be over me. He ain't going to be over my money. He ain't, can't tell me where to go, what to do. All right, so let me help you out here. Let me tell you what head does not mean. Again, because we get it twisted, all right? Head does not give the man a license to tyranny. Doesn't give him a license for that. It does not mean he does not consult his wife for her wisdom, her feelings, her concerns, or her judgment. I, I need to get personal here. Sister Redrick, I didn't tell you this in advance, but forgive me. I'm going to ask for forgiveness instead of permission. I learned that from a wise young man by the name. I'm not going to call Minister Fred's name. But anyway, all right. So, 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 but let me, let, me, let, me, let me just tell you how important that became in our relationship. Early on, early on, early on, early on, real early on, uh, when, when, we, when we met, I was already in business for myself. And Sister Redrick is a very intelligent woman. But I consider myself the business mind the head in the household. And Sister Redrick would give me some wisdom and some understanding on some business moves that I did not need to make. But because I was the man, the head, I felt that, I hear you, but this is what we're going to do. Now, being the loving and submissive woman she is and was even early on, she allowed my foolishness to go on. And it became painful both personally and financially. And then I had a revelation. I read this passage over again. And I understood that head didn't mean Boss. All right. Because I had to read the rest of the verse as Christ is the head of the church. So how is Christ the head of the church? So head here is talking not about dominance or domineering, but about roles and responsibilities. So what was Christ's role and responsibility to the church? Christ sacrificed himself. Christ loves the church. Are y'all walking with me here? Brothers, I'm going to talk about this more next week. I'm just giving you a little bit right here because I don't want the sister to hang up and to check out on me. I'm trying to help everybody here. You want to be a power couple? This is where your power comes from. Remember, we got the power last week. We said that three uh, is a crowd, right? No, only when Christ is not in the middle. So if Christ is in the middle, that's where your power comes from. He's your power broker. All right? Are are y'all walking with me here? And and so so once I understood uh, that my role uh, was about a responsibility, all right, and, and, and not being a boss, Uh, Then I also had to go back and read over in the Genesis where it said he made them male and female. I think that's Genesis 1 verse uh, chapter 1 verse 27. And he gave them dominion 
over the earth, the birds and the animals and the things in the sea. He gave them dominion. Can I talk plain? Eve, Adam and Eve, man and woman, the first, were kings and queens. Eve was Adam's queen, not his slave girl. There's a huge difference between the two. And remember, two weeks ago, we talked about where God took her from, out of his side, not out of his foot, not out of his head. Are y'all walking with me here? That she's a helpmate. So what God is doing is giving a role and a responsibility. Now, now I'm getting ready. To, I'm getting ready to make it a little tough now because I, I hope this is going to help. So it means that the man is in the first position. Now, there's a reason for that. Can I talk plain? I, let me just talk. Plain. Let, me, let, let me go into the secular world just a little bit, because most of you would understand this from the secular world. In the secular world, when you have an organization, when you have a company, somebody has to sit in the main chair. Somebody. In fact, if you got two people in the same chair, you got a two headed monster. If you try to give people equal power, in fact, I'm going to go over here on this side help out in some household. There is no such thing as a 50-50 marriage. Both of you can't have equal power. Somebody's got to sit in the driver's seat. So when he's asking the wife to submit herself to the husband, husbands, I'm going to talk about this next week, so you're not getting off the hook. He's talking about in a Christian environment, in a God-centered environment, with a man who is going to love her like Christ loved the church, which means in his every effort, his every motive, his every intention is going to be for your benefit and for your well-being. Show me a lady, show me a woman who doesn't want a man put in her first in all of his decisions. Notice what it says next. As Christ is the head of the church, watch this, his body. His body. So a head got to have a body. Head got to have a body. Head can't operate without the rest of the body. Everybody's got to have a role and a responsibility. So when you surrender, when you submit yourself and allow him to operate in that role, then husband, you, uh, next week you're going to get yours. Just, 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 can, can I just pause there for just a moment? All right. And, and it says his body of which, watch this now, he is the Savior. So that's when you have to go back and look at the head. It's telling us how the head ought to operate as of which Christ is the Savior. Now, it's not putting the man as God in that text. It's giving you the simile for you to look at. And how did God, how did Christ operate in the church is how a husband ought to operate in the house. Christ never did anything to hurt the church. Christ did everything for the church. Christ is the church protector and provider. Whoa. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be, make all the money. You, it doesn't mean you have to have all the resources. It doesn't mean you have to be the smartest in the house. Uh, but when you come together, this is going to talk about some oneness, so I'll leave that to the side. So, 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 so let me give you a second focal point here. It says here, the husband and wife's relationship should resemble Christ and his church's relationship. That's why it's so important that Christian marriages are healthy looking. All right, because it gives the world what Jesus is like. And sometimes people won't come to a physical building or get online with us, but they do see you at work. And they do hear how you talk to your spouse or don't talk to your spouse. They do hear about your relationship when they're talking about their relationship. They need to hear someone who can say, well, no, 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 that's not how we roll at our house. They need to see and hear that. Are y'all walking with me here? All right, so let's go to the next verse. Let's, this is the, yeah, let me go, let, let, yeah. So now this is where we need to spend a little more time. Now as the church submits to Christ, there it is again, that simply as the church submit to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husband, oh, this is the part brothers used to like, in everything. <laughs> yeah, we. That, 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 yeah, that, now, now, go get your Bible, baby. 
Here, here's what we're going to read now. Here, here's what we're going to read. We're going to read the first part of verse 22. Why submit to your husbands? No, why submit yourselves to your own husbands? Then drop down. We're going to skip all the rest of that. And so submit to me in everything. Now, now, now that's called proof text. And that, that's how people cherry pick the text and make the Bible say what they want it to say. All right? That's what we do in, 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 in everything. There it is right there in the text. Right there. Read, 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 read it to me, baby. Read it to me. Read it to me. Eat the cake, get it, man. Eat the, no. All right. That was a submission thing. That was a, that was a, when you go back and look at that, he was forcing Tina into submission. Eat the cake, Ellie Mae, eat the cake. Submit to her husband in what? Everything. Even if it means eat the cake. All right? This is what the text says. Look at the text. But now, it says, again, can't, can't run past that word ass. Now, as the church submits to Christ, all right, so also wives should submit to her husbands in everything. Why? Because the church submits to Christ in everything. He didn't have to put it there because that's understood. But for the wife to submit to the husband in everything, you have to then go back to verse number 22, as you do to the Lord. Remember I said I was going to come back to that. Which means then, watch this, you, well let me say it like this. Yes, I can say it like this. In everything that God would have you to do. And that's in any kind of relationship, that's at work. That's at home, that's in other relationships. So can I talk plain? Let me talk plain. Ladies, if your husband asks you to bring a third party into your relationship, into your bedroom, male or female, that freaky, can I say freaky stuff? Crazy, whatever you want to call it. You ask him to show you in scripture where Christ says that's okay. Plain and simple. If the scriptures don't say it's okay, then it's not included in that everything. Everything only includes everything in which Christ would have you to do. Period. 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 If Christ doesn't ask you to do it, you don't need to do it. Now, the flip side of that is in everything that Christ asks you to do, whether you feel like it or not, you're supposed to do it. Now, let's go back. It's the submit there is the same thing. This is willful. He can't make you eat the cake. You will willingly do that. Why? Not out of war, but out of worship. You do it because you love the Lord. Now, if you're in a relationship with a man who claims to love the Lord, then it's going to be incumbent upon him, and we're going to talk about him next week. But this is how you become that half to be ready. If you want your Boaz, you got to get yourself ready. All right? Yeah, I know. Don't, don't, don't quit me this week. You say you want to be a power couple. See, as I said earlier, being a power couple is more about perception, public perception, than reality. And here I'm talking about reality, how you can live day to day, day in and day out in your relationship with your spouse. And if you're not married, trying to get married or struggling or whatever, start applying some of these principles. We got some great growth groups. We got one called Kingdom Men. And men, we, a lot of what I'm going to be talking about next week, y'all are going to be talking about at some point. And, and, and for, for, for the ladies, we, and for those couples, we got a couples class that's hitting on some of these same things. And you don't have to be married to be in the couples class. And we got some folks who aren't. And, and I'm encouraging you to get there. So you can realize what your everything is. 
Yeah. So, so, so what's your third focal point here? Husbands must be worthy of a wise submission. You must be worthy. Men, don't expect a woman to submit to you if you haven't submitted yourself to Christ. Go back to verse 21. It says, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That means each of us has to submit. So if we're not submitting to Christ, then how in the world can we expect to ask our wives to submit to us as they do unto the Lord when we're not doing our part? Oh, that's, that's next week. I, I'm getting confused on the weeks. Some overlap here. It's got to be some overlap. Got to be some overlap. You got to understand that submission is part of oneness. Submission is part of oneness. Now remember, Paul wrote this letter, as I said, from the very beginning, whether it's the first century or, or the 21st century, uh, to, to give us the ideal practices in an immoral world, how to make life better, not bitter. He was elevating relationships, not putting them down. You see, most of the time when we read this, we believe God is asking us to become less when God is trying to make us to become more and to become better. These principles seem counterculture, but if you want a relationship with a, where you're going to have better romance and better finance, this is the route, my brothers. This is the route, my sisters. This is Power Couple 101. I wish I had time to go deep, 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 deep. But join the couple's group or the men's group and you'll catch more of it. Now, so, so, so let me just give you, let me, before I get out, get out of here, uh, I, 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 let, me just, let me just give you some four, four ways, four keys to being a true power couple. Uh, throw away all those names I just gave you. Just, just get rid of all of that. Uh, that's, just, that's just perception. All right, that's just perception. And, and, and don't, don't, try to, don't try to aspire to be those kinds of people, okay? Uh, many of them gonna change wise between now and the next two or three years anyway. There are a few of them that's gonna stick, uh, but most of them, they gonna be wife flipping or husband flipping. All right, don't they flip houses? Don't folks flip houses? They flip relationships too. But here, 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 here's your first one here. A power couple, watch this now, you wanna be successful, when each submits, that's what I just talked about. Didn't I say submission is a, uh, it, yeah. Submits to Christ's lordship. Don't miss that one. This is talking about dual submission. When each submits to Christ's lordship. All right, here's your second one here. Here's your second one. The wife's relationship to the Lord is her motivation to submit to her husband. Oh, don't miss that one, sisters. Don't miss that one. Your relationship to the Lord. So if you don't have a good relationship with God, that could probably speak to why you can't submit to your husband. Okay, here's the third one. Here's your third one. A husband's headship, watch this, is not about his ruling, but about his responsibilities. All right? It, it, it's not about, I'm the head, I'm the head. It's about his responsibility. Is, are you willing to take the bullet? Jesus took the cross for his church. Are you willing to take it? All right. When a woman sees that there's a man who's willing to make her a queen and take the bullet, brothers, you're not going to have to try to force her to eat the cake. Number four, a power couple's relationship, listen to this, involves roles and responsibilities that are for the good of each other. Men, you got a role and a responsibility that your spouses are counting on you to do. All right? And if you're not willing to put in the time why do you expect them to do what you want when you haven't done what God has asked you to do? So here, what's your bottom line? God has given us the best blueprint to be successful power couples. 
There are many. Um, I'm going to get a little personal here. Prior to my marrying Sister Redrick, and prior to, everybody has a B.C. period in their lives. That's before Christ. In my B.C. life, before Christ, I followed all kind of formulas trying to be a power couple, trying to build a, uh, what, what, what is it that they try to build? A kingdom or, 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 or empire, an empire, that's it, an empire. And the more I tried to do it Herb's way, the worse it got. Did I have some success, some financial success? Yes. But did I have a peace in my heart? Did I have a relationship that was pleasing to God? No. It wasn't until Christ came in the middle of my heart, fulfilled my life, that I was then able to see what God would have for me. And I'm so grateful now that God has given me my better half. I married up. And for that reason, I say that we're God's kind of power couple. Not because of who we are, but because of whose we are. Is that, is, if that's what you want, God is waiting and Minister Fred is going to come and give you some ways that you can follow the best blueprint, not only to be a power couple, but just to be who God has called you to be. God bless you. I'll see you next week, Lord willing, for the second half. Follow me on Twitter at Herb Redrick. God bless you and have a good day.